Okay, today we're going to be looking at WebKit again with uh, Python and GTK. And we're going to create a very, very simple, very basic web browser. Um, so here we go. Let's get started. I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. But once again, as always, use whatever text editor you prefer. And I'm going to do Vim and we'll just call it um, mybrowser.py. And we will uh, start with our shebang line as always. Uh, USR bin env for environment. Our environment's going to be Python. Next, we're going to import GTK, which is our uh, package for creating GUIs, and WebKit, which is our, basically, it's going to do most of your web browsing functionality for you. Uh, we're going to create a window. I'll call it win, and it's going to be a GTK window. So we're creating an object. We can call it pretty much whatever we want. I'm calling it win, and what type of object is it? It's a GTK window. Next, uh, we're going to type win.connect, and we're going to say here inside parentheses, destroy. What that's saying is we're creating a window. When you click the X on the top uh, bar toolbar of your window, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to kill the application, close the window. Otherwise, you click that, the window would disappear, but the Python script will just keep on running in the background there. Um, so destroy comma lambada w uh, colon gtk dot main quit. Uh, next, let's create a container within that window that we can add stuff to. We're going to create a vertical box so we can stack things vertically inside the window. I'll just call it box one, and I'll say it's a gtk dot v for vertical box, so vbox. And we're going to take our window object and we are going to add to it that box one we just created. So we have a window and then an invisible box that we can put stuff into and we put that box within the window. Uh, next, let's create a second box that we're going to put inside the first box, but this one will be our horizontal. This will be where we add our address bar and our, our go button. Um, if we add them both to uh, uh, the first box, since it's a vertical box, you would have your address bar and then a big button below that. We actually want to have it going um, horizontally so you have your address bar and then the button next to that. So we're going to create a second box. I'll just call it box two. You may want to call it something else just uh, for easier reference for you so you know which one's which. But since this is just a short little script and it's just a tutorial, I'm going to call it box two. Next, we're going to take box one. And we're going to pack start. So we're going to add something to that. And what are we going to add into box one? Our box two. So box two is now inside box one. So now let's create a, um, a uh, address bar. And I'll just call it address bar. So I'm creating an object. I can call it pretty much whatever I want. I'm calling it address bar. It's kind of long. You may probably want to do something a little bit shorter in an actual program. And what type of uh, object is this that we're creating? It's a GTK using the GTK module we imported. And it's an entry box, which is just or an entry, which is basically just a text box, a single line text box. And we're going to add that into our second box. So we're going to say box two dot pack start and we're going to add that address bar. Uh, let's uh, now go win.show all. That'll be a simple command um, that if you put at the end there will make the window visible as well as everything within it uh, rather than making each one shown individually. Uh, it all depends on your application. If you have stuff that you need hidden at first, you don't want to do that. But for this program, we're going to do that. And then gtk.main parentheses will actually start the GTK main package and make your window visible. Otherwise, the script will just um, basically run through an end before you see anything. Uh, basically, this uh, little command here will keep it looping so that the window stays up on the screen. You can actually do stuff with your program. I save that. Now I'm going to change mod plus x the name of my script to make it executable. And then we'll dot slash the name of our script. And there we go. We have a little tiny window here. But the only thing in it is our text box there, our entry box. We can resize, and there's our box. 
and we can type in it, but it doesn't really do anything yet. We'll close that and we'll go back into our script and continue adding to it. Um, next, we're going to add a button our go button. So after you type in address into that uh, entry box, you can press go and go to that page. So we're going to say um, go button is what I'm going to call my object. You can call it once again, pretty much within reason, whatever you'd like. And that is going to be a GTK dot button. And then inside the parentheses here and within quotations, we're going to add a string and we're just going to say go. So our button will say go. Um, now we need to add that into our box. We want to add it into our horizontal box, which is our box two, so that's next to the address uh, entry box. So we're going to say box two dot pack underscore start, and then inside parentheses our go button. Next, we're going to start adding in our our WebKit. But if you watch my first tutorial on WebKit, if you just add in WebKit to a window and the web page you go to, uh, it will resize your window to whatever size that web page is, which you really don't want because web pages can be rather large, especially uh, vertically. So let's add in a scroller first. So same thing we did in our last WebKit tutorial. I'll create an object. I'll call it scroller. GTK.scrolled window is the type of object. And we're going to add that into our box one box one will um will put now this will put it box one uh, this will put our scroller box in box one just underneath box two so we're going to say box one dot pack start and our scroller object next we're going to create our web page viewer, which is our WebKit object. So we're going to create an object. I'll call it web, but once again, you can call it whatever you would like. And we're going to say that that object is a WebKit dot web view. So I have the WebKit module, which we imported up top here. We're going to use the uh, web view, which is the, the viewer, the actual where the page is displayed. And then we're going to take our scroller object and we're going to add to it that web viewer object we just uh, created. Uh, let's see what we have so far. We'll save that. We don't need to make it executable again because we've already done that once. So we can just go ahead dot slash and run that script. And here we go. We've got our address bar here, a little web viewer down here, and a go button. Nothing really does anything yet. I can type anything in here. I can type google.com and click go, nothing happens. Uh, so now we just need to add, start, start adding some functionality to uh, the stuff that we have in there, and mainly uh, that go button. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define, so I'm making a function, and I'm defining it, def, space, and we'll just call it go, but, just because that's funny. Um, but it's going to be what happens when the go button is run and we'll connect our go button to it. Um, it's going to, the button itself is going to pass some information. Basically the information it's going to send is itself. It's going to say the widget that's sending to it is the go button. So we need to grab that somehow. So we'll create a variable, uh, for this function right there called widget, even though we're not going to use that within this function. Now we're going to create a uh, variable object and we're going to say that object, I'm going to call it add because it's going to be our address. I could type address, but I'm just going to keep it short. That add object is going to equal the value of our address bar's text. So address bar dot get text because we're getting the text from there and don't forget your parentheses. And then we will say web, which is our web viewer object. And we're going to say we want to open the page that that equals. So web.open and then add, which is the information from here, which is the uh, text information from our address bar. Let's go ahead and save that, run our script, and I'll type in google.com. I'm going to tell you right now that this is not going to work, and I'll show you why. But first, click that. Oh, well, 
doesn't work, but not for the reason I was going to tell you. We haven't connected our button to that function yet. So we're going to say uh, go button dot connect. And then inside parentheses, we're going to say clicked. So this is going to happen when the button is clicked. What are we going to do? We're going to run the function go but. So when you click, when you click the button, run this function, which is up here. It's going to create an object called add, going to get the text from your uh, text address bar, and then open up our web browser to that page. But uh, we'll go in here once again. I'll make this a little bit larger, and we will type in google.com. And once again, we're going to click this, and the page will try to load, but you're going to get an error. See, unable to load page because it's looking for a local file since we did not put HTTP at the beginning. If I put HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and click go, now Google loads up. There we go. So we have that, but a lot of people don't put HTTP at the beginning because it's really not necessary. Um, so what we, what we can do is we can check what the person has typed and if it doesn't begin with HTTP, colon forward slash forward slash, we'll add that in. So let's add that to our function right here. We're going to say if add, that's the text from the address bar, dot starts with, and then in parentheses, inside quotations, HTTP. So we're going to say if that text starts with this, well then go ahead and open that in the web browser. Else, so if it doesn't, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take the um, add and we're going to add to it. So we're going to say add equals HTTP colon forward slash forward slash plus add. So we're replacing the old add with the new add. We're taking the old add, adding HTTP to the beginning of it, and then overwriting the old ad. So we have that now. Now we can say, uh, we can go straight to uh, sorry, just spacing things correctly there. Uh, we can say open dot oh, sorry add and that will be fine but let's also change our address bar to reflect the change we just made. So we're going to say address bar, which is our entry that we created down here. And we are going to set, instead of get text like we did earlier, we're going to set the text to equal add, which is our new updated with HTTP at the beginning. So if the user types it in and it says add at the beginning, go ahead and open it. If not, add, add, add HTTP to it. Save that, run it. Google.com. If I click go, you can see it adds to HTTP and it opens up the web page. Now our window starts off kind of small. I'm not really going to get into resizing window. I think I've gone over that in the past. But real fast, if we run that, when we do resize the window manually, you'll notice we get a lot of space here and um, the button here is a full size there. Now you may think, oh, that's the button. I need to, to change the way the button is by when I package the button, but actually you got to remember it's inside that that um, horizontal box. So really when we're packing box two into here, we're going to say false, comma false. So this is saying when we add box two, do not stretch to fit uh, its entire space. If we save that, run it, I type something wrong, it's because false has to be capital, I believe. And you can see Vim even color codes it now that I typed it properly. And now if I drag this around, ta-da, and I can type in google.com and click go. And I'll type in filmsbychris.com and I'll click go. And there we go. And we got our scrollers. So all is good. Very, very basic. Obviously, if you're actually going to make a web browser, you're going to want to add more than that. But if you want something very basic, that's it. I'll have this link in the first link in the description. I'm sorry, I'll have this code in the first link in the description. I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. And I hope that you have a great day. Mm -hmm.